to the surprise of no... Oh, Shauna's back there. I didn't even see Shauna. Hey, Shauna, you're on TV. To the surprise of no one, the public is being radicalized in real time, just as anyone who's read me or followed me or seen my stuff could completely predict. With a poll coming out today saying 78% or 71% of people support bringing in the National Guard. Good question. Why am I so hot? I don't know. I think genetics. I work on it too. And 51 to 58% support the National Guard coming in. So this is actually not a surprise to anyone. Um, Julius, come here. This is not a surprise to anyone. Well, it's a surprise to a lot of people because most people in the media are complete total morons and have no understanding of, I'm glad people say I'm looking yoked. I haven't been lifting actually, so maybe it's the, I started taking this new supplement as a pro hormone, so it must be working because I'm not, I'm not working out. Anyway, enough, enough about me and how good looking I am and everything. But mass psychology is pretty predictable. It actually follows predictable patterns. The only variable that's unknown in mass psychology is timeline. So here's the way mass psychology works. You put people in a group. They do things as a group that they would never do. This has been shown. So for example, if it's one person and one person is on the ground, that one person by himself will almost never stomp that person in the head. Almost never. A, occasionally a true sociopath might, but almost never will that happen. If one person's on the ground and you have five people, what happens? All five will start stomping that person. Groups regularly do things that they would never do as individuals. Individuals and groups regularly do things more violent and more extreme than they would ever do on their own. This mass psychology. Demands for solidarity can quickly turn into demands for groupthink, making it difficult to express nuance. Thank you. So then... <laughs> I read that earlier. I thought that was Do we have quote. any Nespresso anywhere? I don't know, but that was a good quote. Okay. Any of it. That was shown in the background. So here's what happens. In a even larger group, you have riots, looters. They're doing things that they should never do. Well, now you have what? A backlash. And the backlash is also group psychology, which means it's going to be more extreme, which means it's going to be more extreme than it would be otherwise. So you have rioters and looters. And you also, when you put this into this Milu, you have people who are pretty much the bad guys, right? You have, so not only do you now have mass psychology on both sides, you now have riots. You have people getting killed in the streets. You have people, police officers being run over. You have domestic terrorism in the streets. So now the backlash is forming and it blows me away how dumb Republicans are. Every Republican is being asked, do you support what Trump did yesterday? Fuck yeah. The, the, there's only one right answer to that if you're a Republican, unless you're an idiot, is do you support Trump? Fucking up rioters? Oh, well, I don't want to judge. Who knows? Tough decision. Wait, what? 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 That's what Republican. Well, I don't want to judge. Even Mitch. Yeah, tough Mitch guy. Kentucky. Motherfucker, know your demographic. You're from Kentucky? And you can't come out and say, we support law and order shutting down riots? That senator, uh, insider trader lady, Kelly, whatever her name, Georgia, Georgia. She's in Georgia. I don't know what, I don't know nothing about what Trump did. You're running for senator of Georgia. And you're afraid to say that rioters should be, feel the full force of law and order. Are you out of your mind? That's how dumb these people are. That's what happens when you live in D.C. You live in this little thought bubble. Oh, all of my friends think it's terrible that Trump marched to the church. All your friends are fucking cocks and liberals. Okay? And that ain't who got Trump elected. Your friends are a bunch of fucking pussies. That's who your friends are. So you don't need to listen to your friends. You need to listen to people like me. Or you need to read the polls. 
The polls say, the polls say 71% of Americans, all Americans, not just Republicans, not just white Americans, 71% of all Americans support the National Guard cracking down on rioters. I didn't even support that. That's more radical than me. The data that people are giving, more radical than me. And I'm apparently this scary far-right fringe character. The public, 71% of, pub of the public, is more radical than me, a fringe right-wing right figure. Right? 58% support the army, motherfuckers. I don't support the armies coming in like that. That can go, you know, that can go both ways. So 58% of the country, all people, more radical than me, right? That's what the number says. But if you live in D.C., oh, I can't believe, I can't believe this. Oh, so, because your friends are cops and liberals. You got to get out of that town. That's the problem. That's why I live by myself. Because if I were around these people then that would become my world, right? I would become, oh yeah, my friends are so offended. Just like, those were the people who condemned Covington, the Covington kids. Oh, can't believe the Covington kids beat up that Vietnam veteran Native American elder. Oh my God, disavow. And then it turns out the guy was stolen valor. He wasn't a Vietnam veteran. He lied about that. And he initiated the fight with the kids. Oh, and he works with the black Hebrew Israelites who hate Jews. And a, a black Hebrew Israelite went on a mass shooting at a Jewish deli in New Jersey. Oh, but you never hear about that because that goes against the narrative. Right? So all these cucks right now, too afraid to say we support law and order. They were the ones condemning Covington. They were the ones who thought that guy was some kind of hero. Nathan or whatever his name was. Stolen, he stole in Valor. Stole Lynn Valor of the Vietnam War. And he rocks with... A group that commits anti-Semitic terrorism. That's how dumb these people are. Right? The country is being radicalized. Sean, I can tell you this. I It's being radicalized in a way that's out of my control that I don't like. Shit's too radical for me. Right? 58% bring in the army. 71%. Bring in the National Guard, those numbers are probably low, right? Because in any poll, you still have a percentage of people who are too shy to say what they really want, right? Trump could have literally gone full fascist and the country would have backed him. I'm terrified. Thank God Trump's not a fascist, right? Thank God Trump isn't the fascist that claim he could be. Because he just would have said, we're just going to roll. We're just going to start smoking fools. And a majority of the country, again, outside of D.C., would be like, well, got to do what you got to do. You got to restore order. So I'm here just losing my mind because the country is getting way too radical for my vibe. And now I'm worried about somebody with my charisma, my intelligence, my charm, my looks, my vibe. What if I really were far right? What if someone with my talent and energy and charisma and spiritual knowledge and my immortal soul decided to make a move? That scares me. Thank God there's no one like that. Yet, thank God there's no one like me with those views. Yet, yet, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? So I'm trying to de-radicalize people. I'm calling for peace, but these fools got it wrong. You think I'm calling for peace because I'm afraid. I'm afraid because I like civilization, right? I'm afraid because I like civilization, not for my own safety. You fools, right? You don't see these people come up to me, right? You don't see these fools come up to me. Me and my friends are like the video game characters people play. The kind of shit that I've done, the kind of shit that my people have done, my friends have done, it's the kind of shit people pretend to do in video games. It's the kind of shit people read books about. We're fine. We're good. 
We are good. Trust me on that. But if you care about humanity and you care about civilization and you care about the weak and vulnerable because you have a Christian spirit, even though I'm not a practicing Christian, I have a Christian spirit. I don't want to see people suffer. My favorite coffee shop closed down. It was profitable. Coronavirus ended it. Right? Doesn't matter. The guy owned it was black, but it was never about, oh, I'll go to a coffee shop because it's black owned, blah, 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 right? But yeah, the, the owner was black, boom, gone, gone. Because the coronavirus, because we had to stay home and be locked down, but the lockdown orders don't apply to the riots and the protests. Hmm. So if you want to engage in commerce, you want to go to church, synagogue, mosque, can't do that, especially church. Can't do that. You want to go riot? Hey, First Amendment. Okay, well, what, what about the First Amendment right to go to church? Right? That's in the same amendment. Well, that's different. We had to be shut down. It's an emergency. It's like, well, wait a minute. So you told me that we had to shut down churches. You arrested peaceful protesters. You arrested mothers. Because we have to. But now if Trump cracks down on riots, he's a dictator. This is so dumb. Oh, that's true. Like parents taking their kids to the park. Or yes. The beach. We can't go to the playground. <coughs> right? We can't take our kids to the park. We can't take our kids down the slide. Right? But if you want to riot, hey, that's First Amendment free speech. How dare Trump, this fascist dictator, deny people the rights? First of all, got a memo for you racist fucking white liberals. Black people don't like the riots. A low income, 189 unit low income housing place in Virginia burned down. That's 200 homeless black families. Fuck you. Fuck you and your little virtue signaling the little fucking square on Instagram, a fucking 200 homeless black families from that building alone. 200 homeless families. Just that one building. One fucking, but that was it. How many homeless black families now? Thousand? How many homeless poor white families now? Hispanic families? Thousands. I guarantee you there are thousands of homeless people now just from the past few days. Now you factor in the, the COVID coronavirus shutdowns. How many black businesses shut down? How many black jobs shut down? Here's something I got for you white liberal fucks. Why is it that when I scroll your timeline, you don't know any black people? I love these people where, oh yeah, I'm going to quote, you know, here's me, black box. How about you don't have any black friends who got a book out, got a business that they're running, got some shit going on in their life, can't retweet them, can't build up their social medias. Right? Can't do that? Right? If you're a white liberal, how many black creators have you taken to above 10,000 Twitter followers? How many? Because me, French, far-right, radical, scary man, my receipts are my receipts. Right? So I'm not going to fall into that cucky little virtue signaling thing. But people who know, know. My receipts are my receipts. So why then do I see, oh, uh, you know, David Simon, he's on the wire, whites are so bad, we got to do more for blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, bro, I don't, you, but you can't retweet any black people? You can't let your 800,000 Twitter followers be exposed to a black voice? They don't give a fuck, right? They don't give a fuck. I remember this guy, and this will never get reported, never, but this happened multiple times. It happened with Andrew Moranson, the New Yorker. And it happened with the Atlantic and the film they did. They're like, hey, so, uh, and it's always very like a whisper. Hey, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of people I'm surprised are here. It's like very under your breath. So a lot of I'm like, oh, you mean all the fucking black people who come to my shit? Cause I treat them like people who deserve respect. Well, you know, well, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't expect, you know, why wouldn't you? Cause you're a white fucking liberal who you don't even retweet black people. But you want those retweets 
right? But you want those retweets of you signaling your virtue, professing your, you know, religion, like the fake Christians that Jesus warned about, the, the pray in public, the Marco Rubios, Marco Castro, right? Marco Castro. Oh, I'm reading this Bible. Rubio doesn't read the Bible. Get out of here. Get out of here. But he wants you to know that he, you know, he reads it. Come on. I'll sit down and debate the Bible with any of these people anytime. But you never hear me other than today, which is meta commentary. Don't be like the Pharisees who pray loudly in public in the churches and synagogues. Don't be like the Pharisees. That's what we're seeing today, the Pharisees with their black squares. How about if you're a celebrity and you have a big-ass account, how about you, for today, shut the fuck up and only retweet black people? Oh, shit. That's too real for the white libs. That's too fucking real for the white liberals. Shut the fuck up today. Do nothing but retweet black voices on Twitter. Twitter is actually overrepresented of blacks according to their population. So it's not hard. It's not hard. Not hard. And you don't even have to pander. I don't tokenize people. I just retweet shit that I like. I just retweet Ed Latimer because I like his shit. Well, he's black too. So I don't need, you know, to tokenize people. I don't need to pander. I don't need to condescend. He posts good shit. Oh, he's black. Cool. Just retweet Ed Latimer today. Retweet Alexander today. Retweet CJ. Retweet Sir Mixel, uh, Sir Hottest. And Lancaster. Sir Hottest J. Right? We got Steph with the real estate stuff. There's a whole black entrepreneurial side of Twitter that I never see the white liberals promote. Right? Why don't the white liberals promote black entrepreneurial Twitter? Why don't the white liberals promote black Bitcoin Twitter? To ask the question is to answer it. Right? Why don't they? They don't even know these places exist. Zuby knew me five years ago. I never take credit for anyone's gains. But when we did an interview, he said, you know, he just thought it was funny because people always be like, oh, how do you retweet Mike Cernovich? Don't you know he's this bad racist guy? And Zuby's like, Cernovich is retweeting me when I had 100 followers. You know? How did that video of Zuby go viral and then he's on Daily Wire with Joe Rogan? Where did that, of him deadlifting? Right? Who, re who, who made that go viral? Right? See, so, and I don't even have to pander. That's the whole point. I'm not even like, oh, this is a dumb tweet. I'll retweet it because I want to show people how woke I am. I'm like, this is a good tweet. I'm going to retweet it. So when you actually open your horizons and open your mind, you'll find black real estate Twitter. You'll find black Bitcoin Twitter. You'll find black entrepreneurial Twitter. So these white liberals, though, they don't want to promote that. They don't want to report self, or uh, they don't want to support self-sufficiency, right? They don't want to. Why? Again, again, I don't need to give you the answers. I don't need to give you the answers. I just need to give you the questions. That was the lesson of Socrates. Socrates, because people go, Mike Cernovich, what do you believe? I believe that I don't need to give you the answers. I believe that I give you the right questions. And once you learn how to ask the right questions, you don't need to tell me what to think. You just learn how to learn, and you learn how to think, and you're like, yeah, that's interesting. Interesting how Seth Rogen's name is trending because he's calling out racists on his social media. How about you don't call out racists on social media and you just retweet people who got good shit going on, who happen to be black? Oh, no, no. So when it comes to sharing a platform, right? When it comes to sharing a platform, when it comes to promoting people, when it comes to having people just read other people, they got nothing to say. Same thing today. Same thing today. So the right question to ask white liberals, 
how about you quit talking about black people? How about you retweet black people? Fewer tweets about black people, more retweets of black people. And the good news, like uh, Jen says, I just find good small accounts, and a lot of them happen to be black. So it's not even pandering. You don't eat, that's the beauty of Twitter. There are so many great unknown voices that you don't even have to pander. You don't have to do affirmative action. You don't have to do diversity quotas. You just have to get out of your white little bubble. Right? You just have to get out of your little bubble. You're like, oh yeah, there's all this shit going on over here. I didn't even know about this. Without pandering, because I will never pander. I will never amplify someone because of their religion or race or gen Never pander. Never pander. But you find good shit when you leave your little white bubbles, your little white neighborhoods. You find other shit. And you promote those voices. That's how it works. But again, that would actually help make the world a better place. That would actually help bring up communities. Reese's wants to put, right? Reese's Pieces wants to put a black square on their social media, but they don't want to put a black man on the board of directors. Right? Right? And why am I saying this? Because I am not the spokesperson for anyone, let alone white men, let alone black men. Why aren't black leaders saying, you'll put a black square on your corporate account, but you won't put a black man on your board of directors. You will put a black square on your corporate account, but you won't put a black woman as CEO. You won't put black people on your board, but you'll move them around your social media chessboard. Right? That's how fucked up our world is. I'm the only one saying this. Right? And that, that's right, because it shouldn't be out on me. I got a lot of other things I'd like to talk about. So how in the hell am I the one making these points? Well, because it's pretty clear what's going on. It's pretty clear what's going on, and I'm not going to play into it. The media wants a war. The media wants to radicalize me. The media wants to show me images of violence and rioting and have me come out and say, yeah, let's get it on. They want to show... That's why George Floyd's own brother said, don't fall for it. He said, don't fall for it. How many of you have you seen that video unless you follow me? No one, right? That video ain't got millions of views. So why don't you amplify the voice of George Floyd's family rather than put that little black square into social media? Oh, because that's real shit, right? That's real shit. So some people are figuring this out. They're figuring out which is, the media, they're showing us images. And by us, I mean all of us, but they're dividing us. They want to radicalize people. I'm not going to fall for it. They're not going to trick me. I'm not going to be a little pawn in the media chessboard. Right? I'm not being, I'm not being pawn. And in terms of is racism real in America, I, I fight conservatives about this for years. Of course it is. I shared... Brandon Carter's message on my Instagram, how do I know Brandon Carter? Because he's a great online entrepreneur. So I know him from Black Business Twitter. He's an online entrepreneur, Brandon Carter. And he did a, vi uh, a video on Instagram that'll never go viral because white liberals aren't going to want to promote that or talk about that. Where he said, you know, a very sad point of his life was he took an Uber to the hospital when his baby was born. And he got loaded up the Uber and they took the baby home after it was born because he's afraid to have a car because black men, when they get stopped by police, things happen to not go well. Who remembers that case out of Minnesota uh, where a law-abiding gun owner was shot by police? He had a concealed carry permit and he pulls over. And he says, hey, just so you know, I, I'm a concealed carry holder, gun owner, black gun owner. Where was the NRA on that? How long did it take the NRA to say? So first of all, how many people even know about that? How many people even know about the time a law-abiding black gun owner he gets pulled over, says, I, hey, I, I just, I'm de-escalating, I'm doing everything right. I have a gun and it's concealed carry. 
Okay, so some of you know philanthropy. Oh, that's good. As you guys know, Phil, that's good. Okay. But a lot of you didn't know. How long did it take the NRA to say a law-abiding gun owner was killed by police? Right? How long did it take the NRA? Why? Because racism. Right? Racism. And that's low hang. Did they, they never did even. I don't know. I thought they did eventually. But it took them a while. It took them a long time, we'll just put it that way. So conservatives go, oh, racism is a real, doesn't happen. I guarantee you if a white gun owner was shot by the police in cold blood like that, Dana Loesch would have been on that. The NRA would have been on that. Hannity would have been on that. That would have been just police out of control. Law-abiding gun owner, second amendment. They would be so far over that. So, but black man is stopped, says, hey, I'm a concealed carry holder, gets smoked. NRA is like, hey, man, we got other. Wayne LaPierre is like, I got a mansion party to go to. I got some Alizé and Moet to buy. Got a party. Party like rock stars on NRA money, even though it's a nonprofit in mansions. So that's where it is, guys. That's where we are as a country. Yeah, how many people know that there was a mass shooting of Dallas police officers? And that that shooting originated from another PSYOP? How many people know hands up, don't, uh, how many people know hands up, don't shoot is a hoax? Right? So how many people know hands up, don't shoot is a hoax? Maybe a lot of you do. Most people don't in the public. Right? Most people, you know, most people don't know. So, and then how many people know that that hoax created so much animosity that there was a mass shooting of police officers? So, we got a hoax. We create, not we, the media creates a fire. They throw gas on the fire. Police officers get murdered because media hoax. It's a phrase based on a hoax, you buffoon. See, that's how uh, brainwashed some of you are. It's a, it's a phrase to you now that originated from a hoax. Right? It's a hoax. So now we see police officers being beat down, run over. Do you think another mass shooting isn't going to happen against the police? Right? And then when it happens... What's going to happen? Then everybody ratchets up. Right? Ratchet is in the tool. Not, I'm not making any kind of colloquialism. Ratchet is, you turn it only one way. So one way ratchet is cold. So the ratchet keeps being turned towards militarization of police, attacks on police. More people die because of the militarization. More attacks on police. That's, that's where we're headed. Right? That's where we're heading. So I'm not going to fall for it. My message to people is peace through strength. And by that I mean, I'm not a nice guy. That's why people are like, why do good guys finish? Because you're weak. You're not good, you're weak. You're a bitch. Bitch ass bitch. Why do good guys finish? Last? No, they don't. I'm a good guy. By choice, by great effort. It takes great effort to restrain this beast. That's the difference between good and nice. Good guys do great. In the long run, good guys win because they don't get baited into stupid shit that's self-destructive. Good guys don't get baited into self-destructive behavior. Nice guys follow the herd. They're weak, compliant. Good men and good women win in the long run because you can't get baited into stupidity. You think that I don't know that the media is trying to bait me into radicalization? You think that I don't know they're trying to get a real movement leader who's radical? Not these fake weak people in their little khakis who cried, got a couple fights of Antifa and they won't show up anymore. Little babies. Right? So you think that I don't know that the media is trying to draft me into a shitty little civil war? And draft me to fight on one side? You think I don't know that? You think I don't know that this is PSYOP? I didn't know that. 
is all about that? Think about it. The media would love a real leader like me to step out and start saying radical things. They would love it. They were so desperate for some kind of civil war that they propped up dorks with 13-inch arms, doughy faces, who looked like a Dockers commercial gone wild. The media propped up rejects from a Dockers commercial. That's how desperate they were to start a civil war. Now they're trying to draft me. And I'm not going to fall for it. I'm not going to fall for the PSYOP. Why do you think they attack me unfairly so much? Right? Because they want to radicalize me. They want to make it seem like to myself that I have no other options. Right? That's why they do it. Because if you watch my stuff for years, nothing radical here. Right? For years. People are like, Mike, I, I followed you from 2017. I don't even understand when I read about you. They call you. I'm like, because they're trying to say, Cernovich, you have no options. You have no choice. You have to go all in or you're finished. I'm all in with making the world a better place. I'm all in with love. I'm all in with God. I'm all in with religion. I'm all in with plant medicine. I'm all in with becoming more enlightened. I'm all in with understanding that the farther we get away from each other, it's the farther away we get from God. I'm all in reminding people that connectedness and togetherness is how you find God and how you get closer to God. That's all I'm in for. Right? But they don't want that. They don't want that. They want people militarized and radicalized. So they can have more violence. But, and this is proof that God has a sense of humor. Who is getting trashed right now other than poor minorities? Rich white liberals, right? So the people who wanted conservatives to fight some kind of civil war, liberal media, they're the ones having their neighborhoods rioted, their shit broken into. They're the ones. So I feel for the poor people caught in the middle of this. And if there's a way that we can help the poor people harmed by that, I'm all for it. But the media, Manhattan's 92% Trump. You can't wear a Trump hat, you'll get hit in the head. They're getting riots. DC, you can't walk around a MAGA hat in those areas where there's riots. That's how you know God has a sense of humor. The liberal media created an army to attack people like me but the predatory army that they created, they're not going to go for that. They're going to go where the people are weak. They're going to go to where the people are weak. So the army that the liberal media created to try to get me to fight, which I won't do, I get them thrown in jail. There's still a guy sitting in jail because of me. Shout out David Campbell. So the army that the liberal media created to fight a civil war with people they don't like is turning on them. That's how it always is. Here's the problem with the Marxist history that these people get. How many gun owners, how many gun owners were there amongst the Cambodian people who were genocided? 1.25 to 2.5 million people. How many gun owners? Right? When has there ever been a time where the genocide happened to the gun owners, to the hard hitters, to the BAMFs? So somehow these dumb fuck liberal reporters who read too much Marxism thought that we live in Stalin times or Hitler times or Pol Pot times where nobody had guns except the army. So like, oh, this is kind of nice that, you know, they, they, read, they read the Gulag Archipelago as pornography. So when the left read the Gulag Archipelago, they imagine conservatives in the Gulags. 
that's their pornography, that's their kink. And they're thinking, wow, this is pretty nice, so we just got to create uh, gulags, and we'll just throw all these people in the gulags, and we'll have Antifa do it. We'll just have Antifa do it to them. Oh, you missed the part about gun ownership, because you're such dummies. Whoever saw that video of that guy shooting the AR-15, a reporter? He's like, oh, I shot it, I have PTSD. And he's holding it in the... The butt stock is like here and flopping all over the place. And he's like shaking as he shoots the AR-15, right? Those are the people who created Antifa. Those are the people who created Antifa. They don't even know how to shoot AR-15, right? Uh, and they're so, they know so little about guns, they don't even know how to shoot it, right? They're, they're, so they're saying, we need gun control. But I don't know anything about guns, I don't know how to shoot guns. I don't know, but I'm going to tell you all about guns. That's the media. So when they read their little Marxist class envy pornography, thinking that they're going to put people in the gulags like their heroes Mao and Pol Pot and Stalin, they miss a big part of the story. I call for peace. I call for unity. I call for connectionists. I state that it's a principle of the universe that the farther away we are from each other is the farther away we are from God. Not because I'm weak, but because my immortal soul craves God, craves love, craves the universe, craves prosperity. And that's the lesson. That's the lesson I think the media will never let you hear. They'll never let you hear that message. But, again, I won't call it good news, but I'll leave you on this. I won't call it good news. I'll just call it humorous news. Ironic news. Cosmic news. The cosmic news is that the liberal media created an army to attack conservatives, but the army decided, hey, we're going to go after the softer target. Think about that, my friends. Mike Cernovich, Cernovich.com, C-E-R-N-O-V-I-C-H.com. We support love, unity, connectedness. The closer you are to each other, it's the closer you are to God. Remember that. It's the message that they don't want you to know. The further apart we are from each other, the more divided we are. That's why everybody who does any kind of plant medicine, even though it's hokey, I learned about love, and people make fun of it. Maybe you should learn about love. Maybe you should learn that when you feel connected to all of humanity, that that's because that's what your eternal soul yearns for. That's what we were created for. And you're, of course, always going to have your own life and your own this and your own that. And that's natural, too. Your own families. Not some hippy-dippy guy. But there's a lesson there that people say, I felt love. I felt connectedness. I felt togetherness. That's why we're at spiritual war. That's what they don't want you to feel. That's what I support. Mike Cernovich, Cernovich.com, C-E-R-N-O-V-I-C-H.com.